more on where podcasts fit, and in-app account deletion. This is Mac Voices. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Truebill. Get control of your subscriptions at truebill.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. This is part two in a three-part Mac Voices Live conversation. This time, we pick up our conversation about where podcasts fit in a multi-channel, media-rich world. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. Mark, I wanted to, since we're talking about this, um, what is your chart? Is is that stock price or profitability, or what is that? Oh, no, that's that's stock price. Uh, you know the uh, you know, the the one at the top, is, you know that goes down. That's uh, Spotify, and the one serving green, just going minor up and down. That's uh, serious. And this is over the past uh, you know twelve months. You know, I didn't have time to much mess around and do anything other than just uh, grab a default chart out of um, well rogan really didn't pan out the way they thought he would because i can catch him on youtube now yeah again yeah well the thing about rogan is there was uh somebody wrote an article last uh november december last year just tracing the behavior on twitter uh, you know surges of new followers and you know other twitter comments and things and the general sense was that uh, he had lost listeners by yeah. going behind the spotify paywall and i think you know they be- believed he may have lost you know between 40 and 50 percent of his listeners just Jeez. by going behind that paywall so um yeah he's out there he seems to generate a lot of controversy but uh, I don't know if it's many people hear it or are aware of it firsthand uh, as a True. result of where he's gone. And I wonder if Cone is going to do the same thing because, yes, you know, from maybe what uh, Jeff was saying, it sounds like his existing body of work will stay in public domain. But I think new content, uh, I'm sure, is going to be uh, subscriber only for a serious uh, customer. Th- so. There will. Um, there's going to be some serious exclusive content created, right. but the shows that uh, that Team Coco is already doing, those are supposed to stay uh, with the dis- distribution model that they already have. Okay, you mean you mean existing content. shows with new content, new content, the existing new- shows. Uh, and the new content those existing shows create right. will right. still be but distributed new- through the formats that they are currently available. Right, but new shows will probably be serious exclusive. At least right. some of them. Some, hey. like exclusives. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it's an interesting model. And it's interesting that, ser- of all people, Sirius is the one that's try- is going to try to do it. I don't well, want I mean, to put it any- makes sense. I, I think it really makes sense. I mean, I think this, again, this is how smart these guys are. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, they know they need a magnet, but you know, they don't want to break and destroy the value web of existing relationships. So uh, hence, the, you know, what they're doing. So, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, I suspect we'll see, you know, Sirius will continue to, you know, be out there. And, you know, this is sort of a bad joke, but it's sort of like AM radio. It'll just stay out there has a distinct purpose and just doesn't die. And uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, Sirius XM got really smart too. Uh, they they brought George Carlin on. You know how part, how very popular he was, and all of his okay. legacy content is in his daughter to, to brought it on Kelly Carlin. And I only think why I think that there was I just watched the the HBO, the HBO special, special that, yeah, that was I got to see was, that. I got to see absolutely that. amazing. I love George Carlin. He was such a, he was so funny, but. You know, here, here it is again. Can you recite the seven words you can't say? <laughs> Maybe after dark. Uh, okay. but, <laughs> uh, seven words you can't say on YouTube. Uh, so, I mean, I I think they were smart with that. Another example of content that's that that is exclusive. A lot of it, even though it's a lot of the old stuff from his records and others and other content, but there is some great discussions that Kelly has with uh, with with guests and talking, you know, the history of George and and all the yeah. great comedy he did. So. Well, and and serious. I mean, well, I wanted to ask this question. I don't want to embarrass anybody, or so if you don't want to answer, just don't. But how many serious uh, subscribers are there here in this group? I am one. No, no. Okay. 
I've okay, had, yeah. I've had I've had trial deals and just haven't uh, haven't renewed. Oh, you know, we, I've had we rental like cars it. and have it, and I've enjoyed it in rental cars. But uh, I'm sorry, I just too podcast centric, you know. To uh, you know, to, no, we like it. I think the mu- the music content is it, it, it's convenient. It, it, the, the, oh, I'm, I'm not. The built-in I mean, radios I'm not, I'm are not, nice. I'm not criticizing. I'm not no, criticizing I'm not. No, I'm not defending. I'm just saying my my reasoning why I've been a subscriber for so long is just I like I like listening to Howard Stern sometimes. And, I think, but I also yeah, you mentioned I'm, that before. You like and, Howard, and, yeah. and and uh, but I also like the music content they have. A lot of their music channels are are really good. I mean, they they do some oh. very good mm-hmm. good programming well, they, on well, it. Well, so. on Howard, they do those live performances every now and then. Right. I yeah. saw one on YouTube with Cheryl Crow. That was great. Yeah. 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 The music Chat- content is the biggest, the biggest influence of it all. I mean, I, I just like, and my, and my wife likes it too. So it'd be, so we, that's why we, we keep it. Chuck, uh, I'm Jeff, totally projecting here. Um, it, it would not surprise me if a large percentage of the people that choose not to have a serious XM subscription when they otherwise could um, fall into the category that I'm in, where we fell out of love with terrestrial radio a long time ago, like back when, uh, when it was all being like commoditized in a really bad way. Um, and it was all being aggregated into the big companies like iHeartRadio and and automated and uh, and Honestly. after yeah yes and after that I had no interest in terrestrial radio anymore and by extension I did not have interest in Sirius XM because to me it I was seeing it as the same thing just more channels. It's still just uh, content coming into my radio. Yeah. So on that, you know, I have this happen to have this thing here. Is you know, this is Nielsen. You, you know, Nielsen uh, guys who you know. Oh yeah. I I got you know spam so damn much over you know spam. You know, like vicious phone calls, both to the phone at home and you know cell phone. And finally picked it up. And first time they said, Oh, this is Nielsen. Oh, well, what do you want? Oh, we have a couple of things. No, it was, you know, takes too long. A couple of weeks later, somebody called up and they had much better of thing. And they got me hooked. Basically, they wanted to do a diary of your radio listening. And they probably pay you like, you know, 18, 10 plus six bucks or 16 bucks or something. Um, and I said, Well, I don't listen to radio a lot. And they said, so, but, you know, do you listen to any radio stations? I say, yeah, it's over the internet. And he says, that's okay. You know, you, that, that counts for the person of our study. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I did it. Now, I think that there's waking up and realizing that, uh, you know, their content is probably not being heard in cars or wherever on, you know, on terrestrial broadcasts, but, you know, people, you know, I mean, what do I do? You know, I, I dial in, you know, to, you know, you know, to different radio stations, I uh, get their news on the hour. It's all three minutes, you know, and right. boom, that's the end of the content. But, yeah. uh, you know, they're obviously out there trying to, I mean, it was, it was incredible how aggressive these guys were in trying to uh, recruit a panel for their research project. I was always, an, I was always, I was always an uh, uh, enthusiast, I should say, with, with listening to radio over the years and, you know, uh, like like iHeart Radio and, and and Audacity and, yeah. and, and all those uh, that um, the they have all the all the stations across the country that you can listen to and you know and I you know I like to listen to the, my local station but uh, right. but I mean over the years I would always like the, especially overnights now everything is all all a pre programmed now you're not, you're not, you don't have original content anymore and that's and I yeah. think that was kind of the downfall where radio went was the fact that there is no more of the local content for your local area anymore. And, and, so and, people are, and, the, and the volume of the percent of times for commercials makes it just uh, right. you know, disgusting. It's atrocious. And you know, uh-huh. I hope, again, that's a danger of podcasting. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't on the mag, magnum you know, opus show that Chuck talked about. We discussed Facebook and you know podcasting, <laughs> but uh, uh there's a danger that uh, it could go the route of uh, radio too. Well, I listen, I, th- I think I, I don't, I don't think it will Mark. And maybe I'm just being optimistic, but I think Sir, Sirius has a better chance 
um, than you know some of the other things, just because they can create channels that are very narrow, narrowly focused, you know, and they they figured out that you don't have to get these massive audiences. You you just you you just need to get the enthusiast for mm-hmm. um, sure. for Conan or for you know sports or for you know whatever else um, Howard um, Web Web in the chat room says he's a serious ex- subscriber. He likes the live sports Stern, of course, news channels as well. But he also likes the diversity of music. Exactly, and and I think that diversity of music is one of its strengths that. It doesn't try, mm-hmm. you know, it, it will, you want, you know, you want country, you can get a country station. You know, right. I swear, I think if you want banjo music, you can probably get a banjo music station. You know, there's all kinds of stuff there. And, um, it, so, and, it, and with the music, they've, they've even extended it even further on the, on the app. And even if you, if you just go to listen to your, on the radio that, that you have, if you have it in your car, you know, they're, they're limited channels. You're not, you're going to get, you know, a good, a good variety of music, but it even goes even more the extreme, your eighties, your nineties, your metal, all the, all the different genres, but they, then they spread them out to know another 10 or 20 or 30 different channels of that alone. So that's, what's kind of unique and being able to listen to the music, you know, on the, uh, the Sirius XM app, as opposed to your dedicated radio, um, you got, you got such variety. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. They definitely are a class act. They're definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I, I making making biz again, making money. Uh, I mean, real profits over a billion dollars. Uh, you know, real profits in uh, in a, in a space littered with uh, you know the Walking Dead, who are funded by VC money and will die <laughs> when that <laughs> runs out. Yeah, Mar- uh, Webb says Mark is correct in in that commercial radio became overly commercial. Right, and yeah, and I'm I'm with I'm with Jeff. You know, I've. I think we both must have fallen out of love with uh, terrestrial radio, AM or FM, you know, at about the same time. Uh, I know what what dro- always drove me crazy, and and sort of to David's point about you know the uh, the um, the iHeart Radio thing, is that it just became okay. It's the same artists, it's the same tracks, yep. and it feels like you just okay. You're trying to sell me this music instead of letting me get what I want or let somebody be my taste maker. And say, hey, here's something new, either from a band that you know or a band you don't, or here's something that nobody's heard at all. You know, right. let's, let's see see what you think of it. You know, mm-hmm. that sounds like that sounds like the early days of FM in the late '60s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. AM was the big what they used to say. Hey, here's somebody new, and they'd bring them out. If they worked, yeah, they kept playing them. If it didn't work, poof. Yep. I've There's, found a lot of artists that way. But, yeah, I mean, but, but we also brought up the fact that Sirius XM bought Pandora. What I mean, you didn't understand what, what was the reason on that. It, it was a smart move, I think, because it's giving them the opportunity to be able to expand even further on music. And and and, and they still offer the free tier of Pandora. You can still listen to the commercials. And uh, but and they pretty much left Pandora alone. But it's but they're, now they're melding their channels on Sirius XM and Pandora with Pandora like stations that you know. It takes advantage of what Pandora does and being able to listen to it on series. And I still think that Pandora had the best music discovery yeah. algorithms of anybody. You know, I think I, it, with still, all, it still does. It still yeah, does. with all due respect to Apple and the way they do it, I think the the Music Genome Project really introduced me to some bands that I guarantee you I would never have heard of, yeah. and I probably mm-hmm. would never have listened to, except that they popped up on my Pandora station. And on, you <laughs> know, before you could decide that you didn't like it, you were hooked. And and you never get that in terrestrial radio anymore because no, it's all homogenized. Whatever is considered the most popular, and uh, and you can't even like channel hop to keep finding different stuff because it's all owned by the same company. And when you channel hop, they've got everything down to uh, pretty much even the commercial break synchronized. So you can't get away from the commercials by hopping to a different channel and listening to a couple songs there and then hopping back where you wanted to go. You know, like we used to do in the old days when our radios had push buttons and you and you had and the little red line that went chink, chink, chink. Yep. I was thinking of the George Carlin bit. He did that. I remember that bit. He goes. Yes. Well, and even even when you had the uh, the digital radios that you know with the seek and scan functions, 
Right. You know, that, you know, that was sort of the digital digital equivalent of that. Mm-hmm. And you're, but you're right, Jeff, you know, at, at some point it's like, you know, I, I, I either go along until I hit a song I like, or I just hit commercial, commercial, commercial. And pretty soon to what Mark said earlier, I've just become a podcast person. You know, if I want music in my car, I'll, I'll use Apple music, but usually I've got podcasts on. So. I, and and I know here we go. I know somebody's going to say, "What the heck does this have to do with with Apple?" Well, it has a lot to do with Apple being in the podcast yeah. space, Music. space, space, yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, you know, and and what they are they are providing. Oh, this is perfectly valid. So mm-hmm. let's see, um, which one did I have up next? Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Truebill. Get control of your subscriptions at truebill.com slash macvoices. $5 here, 10 bucks there. Monthly subscriptions often feel like a great deal until you forget about them long after you've forgotten about them. Get your subscriptions under control with Truebill. Truebill helps you discover hidden unwanted subscriptions and cancels them with just one click. Have you signed up for subscriptions that are impossible to cancel? Never pay for an unwanted subscription again with Truebill. Somehow, everything in our lives has turned into a subscription service, from TV channels to the gym to food delivery to your personal care products. These recurring charges add up without you even knowing it. Truebill helps you see all these subscriptions in one place, keep the ones you want, and cancel the ones you don't. Start canceling your unused subscriptions at Truebill.com slash MacVoices. Go right now. Truebill.com slash MacVoices. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash MacVoices. Thanks to Truebill for their support of MacVoices. Well, no. While you're looking for that, for yeah, people John. that are saying, oh my God, I can't believe it's going to be more uh, uh, content that's exclusive to the one platform. They all have that's it. it. Uh, and my favorite exclusive right now is, uh, and this will probably be a, a surprise to some people, Prehistoric Journey on Apple TV+. Plus. Oh, oh, I love the Apple TV+. Plus. Crap. Mm. I, I love mean, it, Apple TV+. Plus. David Attenborough, it's uh, doing uh, dinosaurs as yeah. if it's yeah. a real live current nature documentary and it is so good you're watching it and you believe it's real and burrow could say anything and i'd believe it <laughs> right <laughs> but you have to have apple tv plus to to watch it but isn't it interesting how we get so we, we accept that we accept exclusivity with tv but we don't accept it other places mm. because that's the way we were trained mm-hmm so true hey, just to take us a little farther along the music path before we get off um it was announced today that uh apple music uh excuse me that ways uh the traffic app now has apple music integration that's favorite that's that's <laughs> perfect because when it's taking you way off course <laughs> that's right, at you least you have to something to listen to when you're in the middle of the lake <laughs> No, wait, yeah. no, wait a minute, Chuck. You put this in here ahead. just to set me up to do that, <laughs> didn't you? Well, I'm a little surprised because I thought you, you you've picked on uh, Apple Maps in the past. I didn't expect oh. you to jump down ways. Oh, I ra- rage quit ways. Like I <laughs> we, like I was in oh, the yeah. middle of a route. That's why I said that. And, you're uh, so mad you put on pants. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go that far. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, easy, no, I I, I was so about. angry mid route. That uh, that uh, I used words that uh, George Carlin let us know that we can't say on primetime TV and uh-huh. delete the app as I was driving down the road Jeez. and was done. And I will not go back to ways again. Screw those guys. Uh, I use ways and I don't have I, I don't have. How do you f- the- yeah, but you, you you get Siri to work as well. Well, that's as true. I recall. Yeah. They yes, like the magic you're, touch. You're just you're just anointed. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, Webb in the chat room asks he wants he would like to know what podcast app everyone uses. Oh, and I know I use Overcast. That's that's I, my podcast app. I use Pocket. two different ones. 
Podcast. He's podcast and overcast. Depends on what I'm listening to. I you mean podcast. Apple's podcast app? I use Apple's yeah. podcast app. Yeah, me too. Apple. Really? Wow. Yep. Mm-hmm. I or use, sometimes you go to the website overcast. directly. Mm-hmm. It's overcast, although I keep thinking I want to check out Pocket Cast. I really like Pocket So, Mark, you saying you go to the uh, websites directly sometimes? Sometimes, yes. That is actually surprisingly common the number of yep. people that still consume podcasts by going to the content producer's website and playing it through there is surprisingly high My i mean I, I don't do it on a regular basis i mean sometimes you just see a link and you figure oh this is easier yeah. than going through the podcast for instance you know the uh what was it over a couple couple of days ago you know jason Cal- Calnes is all in you know he had elon musk as a guest and I saw this. I saw some excerpts about it on YouTube, and then I saw uh, in, a, in an email newsletter, you know, a link saying, "Oh, this is one of the best, best financial podcasts of the week," and had a, you know, just clicked it, and you know, I listened to it, and oh, this is great. So, I, so you're um, listening to your... some earbuds and got the dogs, and you know, went out walking for you know 48 minutes. There you go. Mm-hmm. Oh. And Musk was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was. <laughs> you well, know, I'm sure Musk was funny, Musk. The, the Musk was Musk. The thing about him is he doesn't put on all these CEO filters and talk in an you know, obfuscating, indirect mode. I mean, he tells you kind of exactly what he's thinking. And um, so great. you were browsing the web on your phone? No, I had uh, woken up um, in the morning and I was looking through email, and then there's this uh, one. You know, newsletter that uh, this guy's a fund manager puts out and talks about you know some of the best content of the week and you know he had this uh, interview with uh, with uh, Elon about uh, what he was planning for uh, Twitter. So the so, link was in your email and you were reading your email on your phone. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So I so I clicked it and it brought it up. Yeah, you know, it brought it up and actually it opened in Apple in in, in the podcast app. So I guess technically it uh, it was the podcast app. But uh, it felt a lot like uh, you know actually going to a website because I clicked a link. I'm gonna have to time to ch- check this out, Mark. I did, I did not I missed this one completely. I'd be anxious to listen to it. Hmm. But that that's that's interesting behavior, you know. And Jeff, you say it's more common than is expected. Yeah, from my stats, I know I'm surprised at how many people just come straight to the to the uh, to the website. So Same here. you know it's. And the great well, thing is, there's usually little extras, David, like little links and things, and that you couldn't get otherwise. It you depends on how website. you set up your uh, your show. Like, yeah, to to uh, get into the sausage a little bit. Um, I mean, you can you have the whole uh, lyrics thing that's built into that MP3 file format, and you can put your notes and chapter markers into that and then some podcast player apps will recognize that and uh, so you can actually get some of that content that you would otherwise have to go directly to the web page for the show to see so you can essentially yeah. embed show notes and uh, transcripts and stuff right in your in your uh, audio file oh, right. wow Again, it just depends on because some of that's. I mean, unfortunately, there's not an easy way to do some of that stuff. It just it takes yeah. adds more time. There is that, and not and process. not every uh, podcast player app will recognize that extra content. True. Yeah, yeah, and that's a problem too. That's a problem too. Um, so let's see here. I want to want to make sure I throw this in because um, Jim has been quiet. Andrew brought this to us, and I think the two of them will have something to say about this. Um, Hold on, I need to go get my popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrew, you want to talk about this one a little? Oh, yeah. Um, I thought this was good news. So, um, I guess Apple has announced this before, and it sounded like it failed, according to 9 to 5 Mac. But starting June 30th, apps that let you create an account inside the app. Uh, Apple is wanting developers to offer, also offer a way to delete that account right within the app. And I think that's awesome. This is the third time they're going to the well on that, aren't isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
So it's awesome in that it's a great idea. It's not awesome. It does not earn Apple any praise because they this is the third deadline that they've set for this. And uh, and I fully expect there will be a fourth deadline. They they have they have lost my my good faith on this one. No, no, wait a minute though. I read this, maybe I read it wrong. So somebody correct me, please. But I didn't read this as the the app deletion thing about the it being out of date. I read this as, you know, this is a new option they want within the app. Yes. And and they set a deadline for when it had to be in there and then set a new deadline for when it had to be there. And now have set a new deadline again for when it has to be. They just keep pushing it back and back. Yeah, and back. that's our latest product is deadlines. Hmm. They've been talking about this for for uh, the last month or two. And we've, we've talked about it. It's it's they they knew it was coming, but now it's finally here. And then they keep, yeah, what you say, they keep moving it. <laughs> but, but OK, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm maybe I'm no kidding. Maybe I missed it because I thought the deadline was for apps that had not been updated, or you that's, know, a, that's a whole different thing. Uh, okay, that's this a, that's, I, that's a different thing. Th- th- this was announced, I think it was at last year's WWDC, although maybe it was two years ago. WWDC. It feels like it's been forever ago at this point. Um, okay, it, it's been at least a year, and I, I think it maybe has been longer than that. Um, and yeah, they announced that. You, you know, because like a lot of services, you know, real easy to sign up. But, you know, if you want to cancel, you have to like call this special number that we don't, you know, or, or write a letter, yeah. um, you know, or, you know, stand on your toes and, you know, twiddle your pinky, you know. So Apple made a rule that you have to be able to uh, delete your account from whoa mark just launched into space <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> yeah, he stood up oh, I, I i am so glad mark that you chose to wear pants today yeah, yeah. he's he came back in for a landing like elon musk's rockets <laughs> hey Gabby. oh by the way i've come up with a new name for elon's rockets and it's a total fail that his marketing team didn't do this his rockets are now going to be called muskets. <laughs> oh, wow. God. That's awesome. That's good. Oh, boy. That's good. Should Should we talk about Bezos rockets? So, Trademark that one. Anyway, I, you know, I saw this story right before, you know, like an hour before we came on air. And I, I have not been able to find what was the deadline that they're pushing back. June 30th isn't very far off. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe it's not going to get extended again. Um, that's that's pretty close. If you know mm-hmm. if there was any chance they were going to extend it again, I don't think they'd set it five weeks away. Um, my my guess is that there's some holdout that's you know that they been, don't want to have to kick off the app. They, store. they don't want to have to kick off the store, and they've been privately pressuring this company. You know, yeah. you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. And, you know, finally, they've got buy in that. Yeah, we'll have it done by June 15th or whatever. So that's probably the backstory that, OK, that you know, we, we've got it all now. Yeah. I, I'm glad you guys said I didn't realize that I missed that one completely. And and as far as, you know, the cancellation process, I'm, I assume you're referring to like Comcast. who. You just can never seem to cancel. <laughs> well, you know, any anything like that. Like, you know, I had a Vonage VOIP service that was nearly like impossible. Or, you know, I, I had an 800 number that they were like, oh, you have to write us a letter on your letterhead. You know, we, we won't. You can't cancel on the phone. Sign it in blood. Yeah. They don't say whose blood. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, so, Jim, I mean, you know, I always turn to you as the developer in the, in the bunch. I mean, forget the, the pushback deadlines. Is this, I mean, is this a really burdensome thing? Is this a big deal? And, and how do you feel about <clears throat> Apple maybe making this a requirement? Well, I think, you know, companies don't want to do it because they don't want people to cancel. 
you know, this is a business business model. You know, you can check in, but you can't check out. Um, so, you know, that's why companies don't want to do it. It's not technically, you know, they make it easy to to sign up. You know, so is it hard to implement? No, of course not. You make a button, you send that request to the server, and you're deleted. But they don't want, you know, they they want a chance to like either A, make it difficult or to beg you not to, you know, oh, please don't cancel. So it's to totally a business thing that, that companies don't want to do it. Um, it's, not, it's not a technical problem at all. Is it me? But this just, this seems to have um, overtones of our discussion about subscription notifications. You know, the, the, the companies that send you something a week or two or, or, you know, ahead of time before they renew your subscription versus those that thank you after they've renewed it for another year. Well, it's the same exact discussion. Okay. And and this is about subscriptions. So, you know, this is what, you know, like a lot of companies are like, you know, we're going to make it difficult to impossible for you to cancel your subscription. Um, you know, let alone whether you're notified or not. So the question is, even if you know that, you know, like my end date is coming, well, how do you cancel? So Apple has said it's got to be a button in the app. Um, it can't even be a button on your website. You can't require somebody to call you. You can't require someone to walk in <laughs> to your office or send a letter. It has to be a button in the app if you can sign up in the app mm -hmm. and, you know, as a consumer, I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. Same. I agree. I agree. I mean, yeah. it's, I mean, it's really, I think the, I don't know if this is the technical term or the financial term. It's kind of scummy on these companies just to, uh, you know, prey on people that uh, they make it difficult to unsubscribe, to try to get, you know, one or many months of additional subscription revenue. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope that maybe the, this time, if 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 what you all are saying is accurate, and I have no reason to believe it's not, that they do go through with this because that would make a lot of sense. And also, you know, I don't want I don't want accounts on things that I don't want to use anymore. You know, if I just, it would be nice to have that option. If if the if the app required me to sign in and get a password, it would be nice to you know be able to with some some level of confidence. Be able to say, you know, the app didn't work out, and therefore I want to be off your roster. Yeah. This Mac Voices Live panel is back in the next edition of Mac Voices to talk more about in app account deletion, why it's not a great idea to just abandon accounts on services you no longer use, and take a look at a new piece of hardware that has all of our heads turned. That's next time on Mac Voices. I hope you'll join us. Until then, and as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.